Hello, welcome back to our weekly devotions. I'm Pastor David Schub at Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend. We continue to talk about forgiveness this particular month, and we read from the third chapter of Luke's Gospel, where it says that John went into all the region around the Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall shall see the salvation of God. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked John, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusations, and be satisfied with your wages. These words of John remind us that a vital part of forgiveness and being forgiven is repentance. The word repentance means to turn around. That's what John is talking about in today's passage. If you understand this great gift you've received from God, if forgiveness restores relationships and sets you free, then turn around. Change your life. Move in a new direction. I've recently been reading the book, U.S., The Resurrection of Terror, by Pastor Kenneth Wheeler. Pastor Wheeler was an assistant to the bishop here in our area in the Greater Milwaukee Synod. He's also one of the greatest truth speakers I've had the honor to know. His book reflects on the oppression of black and brown people in this country that continues each and every day because of the white supremacy that really all of us are a part of. We all hold the system together. And I want you to hear some of his words from the book. He writes, Anger is something I was taught that I should never feel as a Christian. Jesus' words to love the enemy have always haunted me. How do you love people who were taught to see you as other, to treat you as other? How do you love people, as Dr. King would ask in his letter from a Birmingham jail, who denigrate your mother and your sisters, who raped them and felt no remorse or sense of shame because black women and black people were viewed as property? Though I would never voice my feelings of anger, they were real and they were deep. To this day, I struggle with anger. And as a result, I also struggle with forgiveness, especially when the forgiveness is cheap. In the words of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance. Forgiveness without accountability is a cheap forgiveness. Later in the book, he goes on and writes, A white pastor said to me in response to my reflections on the Buffalo Massacre, when that happened not that long ago, that he thought that I had lost the capacity to forgive. No, no, I assured him, far from it. I have not lost the capacity to forgive, but I don't believe in cheap forgiveness. I don't believe in giving a pass to people, and especially to white supremacists, who continue to do violence to our black bodies. This kind of cheap forgiveness grants permission to the perpetrator to not have to assume any responsibility for the offense or hatred that gave rise to the offense. If we are truly sorry for what we do, what we are complicit in, what we allow to happen around us, then we need to turn around. Forgiveness sets us free to start in a new direction. So can we, will we, turn around? During Lent, I referred to a story from South South Africa. I wish I had more stories like this that came from our situation in the United States, but I don't hear as many of them, though they're there. 
occasionally. In the historical novel, Ah, But Your Lord is Beautiful, Alan Patton told the story of a white South African judge named Jan Christian Oliver. A black pastor invited him to attend his church on Monday, Thursday. Given the reality of apartheid, the judge risked his career in going. Nevertheless, wanting to be a good man, he went. He learned upon his arrival that the service was to be one of foot washing. They urged his participation. He was summoned forward to wash the feet of a woman named Martha Fortune, who, as it happened, had been a servant in his own house for over 30 years. Kneeling at her feet, he was touched by how weary and disfigured her feet had become from years of serving the needs of his household. Gently moved, he held her feet with gentle hands and kissed them. Martha fell weeping, as did many others in the room. The newspaper got wind of the story, and, Oliver's, and Oliver lost his judgeship. His political career was ruined. But he claimed the moment to have been the very one in which he found his own soul. We need to let God's forgiveness and love sink into our souls so that we don't just speak the words, I'm sorry, but that then we turn around and we live in a different way. Our first attempts may fail, and our second, and our third, and our fourth to be a different person may fail. As I've found in my continuing struggles with my own racism, I have to struggle with it each and every day. But every time I'm forgiven, it's a chance to get up and turn around again. And it's not just in this incredible sin that we all face, but in day-to-day ways, I try to turn from my sins, both large and small, and go in a different direction. But I'm thankful for the opportunities that forgiveness allows for us, as Desmond Tutu says, because without forgiveness, there is no future. God is always forgiving us and is setting us free to turn around so that we might find our own souls and enter into the new life that Christ offers. Let us pray. Lord, help our pleas for forgiveness to be more than words. Help us to truly turn around and seek new life. Help us to be vehicles of the struggle for new beginnings in the world around us as well. Amen. Every day is a chance for us to turn around. Don't neglect the opportunities. Have a good week.